Today I wanted to talk to everybody about how to maximize health through autonomic nervous system homeostasis, right? So the key to overall health is having your autonomic nervous system be in as much homeostasis as much as possible, right? So the autonomic nervous system is like a seesaw. We need both sides of it. So we need the sympathetic side, which is our fight or flight response, and we need the parasympathetic side, which a lot of people refer to as the rest and digest resp re response. That's not 100% correct, but more or less, right? We can go with that. So the parasympathetics and the sympathetics work together back and forth. When the body and the, and the mind and the brain get aggravated, the, the typical response is to go into sympathetic activity and it's like a protective response, right? And a lot of the time, the brain and the body cannot break out of that protective response and we get chronic sympathetic autonomic hyperactivity, which is very, very detrimental to overall health. So as far as the easiest, simplest ways to improve health. People that exercise on a consistent basis, that's the important thing, right? Consistency. People that exercise on a consistent basis, people that eat well, and people that sleep well, on average, live 14 extra healthy years compared to people that don't, right? You can check out Dr. Peter Atiyah's book. That's a great book. It's called Outlive. He's got great information about how to exercise, why to exercise, how eating well helps your body, right? I'm not gonna get into all that. So just keep that in mind that those three simple things will basically keep you out of the doctor's office forever, which is what we want, right? Aside from that, and unfortunately most people do not do those things for themselves, right? If you just look at the, at the simple stats, 70% of the United States population is overweight. So that's like 238 million out of 340 million people that are overweight, overweight or obese. Aside from eating well and exercising and sleeping well, another very, very simple cheap and extremely effective tool that we can use to regulate the autonomic nervous system is, is dry needling combined with joint manipulation, right? So dry needling is the best, fastest way to remove soft tissue pathology throughout the body. So every little millimeter of pathologic tissue that we have in our body, that includes just tight muscles. So every little millimeter of tight muscles that's causing tissue hypoxia throughout our body. It's causing, causing nervous system disruption and it's taking energy away from the autonomic nervous system that it could be utilizing to do other things like regulate our organs and regulate our heart rate and stuff. Enough little pieces of tissue pathology start sending enough negative afferent signals to the brain and sucking enough energy away from the autonomic nervous system where different systems start to dysfunction in different ways and it can be different on every person, but the overall result is an energy deficiency and a metabolic crisis in the body and in the brain where our sympathetics are up too high, our cells are producing less ATPs and less NAD plus and less NADH and stuff like that. The mitochondria start to dysfunction, our DNA starts to get misread more frequently, right? Our epigenetic function gets screwed up and all sorts of bad things start to happen. So again, aside from the things that people can do for themselves, like eating and exercising, dry needling is such a specific stimulus to the tissues that it's like kicking the brain in the head and it snaps it out of a, of a hibernation state and it restores normal communication between the body and the brain, which is key to health, right? So if we can normalize enough soft tissue and normalize enough brain function, so remember dry needling I think should be thought of as a brain treatment and not a soft tissue treatment. We are utilizing the soft tissue to affect the brain so the brain can then regulate the soft tissue properly, right? So we do create a small mechanical change with both manipulation and dry needling, manipulation a little bit more so, but the overall reason they both work so well when thoughtfully perform performed 
is that they are a specific enough stimulus to change the brain more than other treatments do. So again, needling is the only direct tissue treatment that we have. So whether it's for periosteum, ligaments, tendons, muscle bellies, whatever it is, it's a direct stimulus that causes a much, much larger shift in the brain towards homeostasis. So when we have pathology in our body, it creates concomitant pathology in our brain, right? So we know like, for example, people with urinary incontinence, the part of the brain that is a primary problem causer is in the pons, it's called the pontine mectorician center, right? That does not necessarily mean that the pelvic floor is pathologic. It means that it's being inhibited from functioning. So if you can needle the pelvic floor and create enough of a specific stimulus, it like it breaks the brain and the pontine mectorician center out of that sympathetically hyperactive state, improves blood perfusion, improves neuronal firing, decreases hypersensitivity of brain neurons, right? It, it, it really, really helps. So if we can just take, so. It, Every individual person has an upper threshold of their sympathetic autonomic nervous system where if you go over that, you completely lose your ability to self-regulate the nervous system and something specific needs to be done to break it out of that cycle. And as far as physical therapy treatments go, dry needling is the most specific direct treatment that we can break the tissues and the brain out of that detrimental cycle that it's been in. And then if you follow the dry needling up with joint manipulation and realign the spine, you take tension off the sympathetic chain and the sympathetic autonomic nervous system, it's very, very helpful because it puts a huge amount of energy back in the tank and it allows the autonomic nervous system to self-regulate and use the innate healing abilities that it has, right? It's not that it forgets how to do it or that it can't do it, it's that it is being inhibited from doing so. So again, the things that I highly recommend to all my patients are eating well, exercising, sleeping well, I talk about that with them, but as far as the things that I do that can regulate the autonomic nervous system, dry needling combined with joint manipulation is by far the most powerful combination that physical therapists have at their disposal, and it's very, very helpful for all aspects of mental and physical health.